hello. <laughs> I haven't even started talking yet. And I'm already like, I'm already excited to be here. Hi, it's Melly from Melly Knits. And after taking quite some time between Delightful Lore, which was my first go at YouTube, uh, which was set with a beginning and an end, I'm back. And I'm in the wool room this time. Uh, relocated due to the fact that I have a family and a dog and, you know, people knocking on the door and popping by and every other kind of thing. So this has a door that I can close and I can tell everybody to just leave me be because, you know, mama's making the YouTubes. Uh, we'll see if this works. Anyway, hi. Uh, naming this episode, that's what we call them, right? Episodes? Naming this episode um, Origins because we have three origins that are occurring here. Number one is I opened up the Fiber Club today, our first ever Fiber Club. We called it Origins. Um, it's sommelier, that's the big header, but this one's called Origins, I'll explain in a second. Secondly, gonna get into the origins of Melly Knits. That is the most asked question I get in DMs is, how in the heck did you end up doing this? So I'm like, I know, right? So I'm gonna answer that question here. And then third, this is the origins of like YouTube that isn't like for delightful or something like that, which is why I was here in the first place, right? So we have some origins today. Um, other than that, don't really know that there is like a structure for this or that there is like, you know, a schedule or anything. This is gonna be like everything else for me. Like a, you go as you grow, um, choose your own adventure and see what it becomes. So we're wing it and we're wing it in. Anyway, on to the first thing that I want to talk about, which is the Fiber Club. So sommelier, that's what it's called. A play on Somelli, yay. As you can see in the phonetics, thank you for the total help with that, Andrea. Um, the, so sommelier is a, it's our first ever shot at a Fiber Club where basically we open up a certain amount of spots it's bi-monthly and you're gonna get auto shipped a bat of my choosing. It might be batlings. I might send you three or four little things or one big bat. I don't know. You're gonna be just as surprised as me about what's coming up there. I mean, I'm gonna know a little bit before you, but you know, whatever. I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna decide that as I go too. So um, that came from, well, we have some pretty intense shop updates. So about this time last year, the shop updates sort of got more like, I don't know, people were like waiting in virtual lineups to get into our shop updates. And there's like language that gets thrown around, like, you know, throwing elbows at a Melly Nets update, blah, 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 blah. So I was thinking about ways of offering fiber that wasn't such a refresh, refresh, refresh kind of rush for people and a fiber club. And then I was like, well, hold up. How is that going to work? Because in the current flow of what we do, like it's me working and Aaron, my husband has a full-time job. So he does this kind of nights and weekends. He loves it. We both love working on it, but you know, really what does time and space allow for, for us to do? So we decided to go and open up with a soft start. Okay, we've got like a little soft start we're doing for this sommelier. It's a bi-monthly club. Every other month you get a bat. And we opened up a limited amount of spots while we figure out exactly how this is gonna work for us in the flow, because we're still gonna do those shop updates. We're just gonna also add this. So we're not reducing the shop updates to accommodate this. We're just increasing our output to accommodate this. And for hand processors, so for anyone new to us, we hand wash, we card, there's my carter here. I got another big one right in front of me here, but I'm not turning the camera because it's perilously balanced. Um, and then, you know, we, we prepare everything from like, like by hand. So, you know, there's like, there's like a limit really to what I'm able to get out in a day, in a month, whatever. But this is exciting and this is fun. So, sommelier. So we named the first clump origins. So that's an April start. And that means every other month, starting this month, people are going to get a bat. Next month, we're opening Sommelier Firefly. The names mean nothing, okay? That's just a way to distinguish which club you're in. And for me to know which club you're in, I could literally pick any name in the whole entire world I want. The clubs are the same. They're just running on alternating months. This one starts in April and then in July or September, November, you know, like that kind of thing. And then the next one starts in May. 
I did that wrong. I did that first one wrong. April, mm. June, mm. August, mm. October. <laughs> you get what I was doing there. The next one starts in May and alternates. I will be making Fiber Club Fiber every month, but customers will be getting it every other month, depending on what club they're in. Unless you sign up for both clubs and then you can have fiber every month. Anyway, that's how sommelier is going to work. We have a club for bats and we have a club for guts, which is the washed wool that you card yourself or comb yourself or whatever you want to do. And we'll have those running uh, as the clubs the every other month. I hope I explain that in some like cohesive manner that that made sense at all. It makes sense in my head. Okay. It was, it was the booming and pulling out the months. I should have totally skipped that part. So that's how the fiber clubs work. Our hope is that once we get into the rhythm, so these clubs happen in the middle of the month. And what's been perfect for us is we pull fleece at the beginning of the month for that month's shop update. So we've already pulled all the April fleeces and we've washed them. But while we've been washing, we've been carding sommelier. So sommelier is like done. Like it's, it's hiding off screen over here. Uh, you can't see it, oh, but I can see it. So this month's sommelier is, is pretty much done. I'm going to be shipping it tomorrow. So that's been great for us for time because generally when we're, when we're scouring, we're waiting for things to dry. You're just kind of like, you're doing that whole game. But now while we're waiting for things to dry and things are in the tub, we can be carding sommelier. So I actually pulled this sommelier fleece about a month ago and I washed it when I was washing for Fibers West. So we just, it was just a matter of, of getting it carted up and getting it ready to go. So we we're liking how this is working into our flow because once I ship sommelier, then we just go straight into carting for the shop update, do that, ship it, start scouring again while we're making the next month's sommelier. Like we're scouring, I'm getting, am I getting confusing? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if this is confusing. But like today I'm pulling the fleece for next month's sommelier and we're going to scour that now with this with this current month's uh, shop update. But I won't card it until next month when we're scouring for next month's update. Anyway, this is all internal stuff. Maybe you're tracking with me, maybe you're not. Maybe it's not even important information I should be sharing, but that's how I'm sort of working out the system to how we're gonna be able to pull this off. Um, and we wanna pull it off. Like I'm excited about this whole club idea. I like the idea that people can get in on a restful bat experience. Like so long as you don't cancel, like your bat's coming. Like we're prepared in advance. I have the bats made before you're ever gonna get charged because that's how I work. I, I get, I don't like working from, I like working ahead versus working from behind and scrambling. I hate scrambling. So, so that's the deal with the clubs. The hope and the plan going forward with the club would be that we would be able to open and offer more. Um, currently the clubs are set to a certain amount of people that can come in because a fleece only gives you so much, right? So like the current fleece we just did, we actually combined two fleeces for the current months, that's a spoiler, for the current months sommelier, um, it's gonna give us about 17 bats. I mean, even like the biggest fleece, we, we've scoured nine pounds of fleece or something, maybe you're maxing around 20, 20 plus, but like a single fleece, so we want everyone in that club to get the same thing we don't want to open a club up to like 50 people and everybody gets something a little bit different, which is why we're going to have sommelier origins, sommelier firefly, sommelier ember, sommelier butt hair. It doesn't matter. Like the name means, it just means whatever. There is the option for us to, this is one that I'm still, I'm still playing with. So we'll see, but there is the option for us to open up specific clubs for those who want maybe only a pure bat or they want only something a little higher end. Like we do do some higher end stuff with like cashmere's and cashgoras and llamas and like nicer, not nicer, but just a more pricey fleece. Like the raw per pound price was a lot higher than some other fleece we buy. And like we could offer that, like the bougie club, but we'll see. We're gonna let it grow organically. We're gonna see where it goes. Signups went great today. I did absolutely no marketing. <laughs> I surprised a lot of you and I surprised myself. You'll be happy to know. I was just like, me and Aaron just got the subscription behind the scenes, the back end website subscription auto renew service thing, just sorted it last night. Okay. And then this morning I'm like, okay, well, everything worked. Like we had a test order come through and everything looked good. And then I was like, I say we just open it up. 
and he was like are you sure like you you were gonna do a youtube you're gonna I'm like eh, let's just open it up <laughs> so apparently i like working ahead on the wool but i'm totally happy to work from behind on the marketing there it is so we put it out this morning real gentle real soft and it just sold 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 so this month is filled um the guts club for this month filled and the bats club for this month filled but next month we'll have a new club with new spots opening up again and then we're just going to see how it goes and if we like are so efficient we're getting more efficient all the time while not compromising that we're totally hand processed and this is a slow craft right but if we can keep working out our systems and our efficiency um i don't see why i can't open up more clubs and again, the only reason I'd have to open individual clubs is just because I want everyone in there to get the same thing and a fleece can only accommodate so many bats. The end. That's the deal with sommelier. That's the deal with it. And again, it's a, you get what you get. I'm going to make whatever the heckin' I feel like making and send it out to the people. That's the plan. So I'm excited. I like this plan. Um, Anyway, so that came out this morning, Somali Origins. Next month is Firefly, and here we go. Okay, phase two. You guys still with me? Mm. I'm 11 minutes in. And that means nothing to any of us because this is the first video, so who knows how long these things are going to end up being. Um, Melly Knits Origins. That's an interesting one. I had a question in DMs. I get this question a lot, but like the specific question in DMs was like, how do you even, like, how did you even get into this? Like, how is it that you're doing what you're doing? Uh, that's another <laughs> go as you grow kind of, kind of tale. So I've been knitting since I was a little kid. Grandma taught me when I was like 12, 11, 13, somewhere around in there. And it stuck good. So I've always been a knitter. Um, love knitting. And then it was probably... I don't know, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, that I got interested in wool, like specifically. So I remember going to Fibers West. That's a local uh, fiber show here in like in my area. It's like 10 minutes from my house. And I remember my whole goal was to look for anything that wasn't Merino. Now I love Merino. I work with so much Merino. There's Merino going in the shop update this month. I have no qualms against Merino. It was just that it was all I could find. And I'm like, there's got to be more, right? Like there's more than one kind of sheep in the world. And so I remember going to Fibers West and I was looking for anything that wasn't Merino because everything offered was like dyed on Merino or Merino this, Merino that. And I ended up finding, um, I hope I'm going to say this right, yarn by, the, it was the Alberta Yarn Project. I think it was Kalia the Ludite. I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm really sorry if I said the Kalia part wrong or the Ludite part. Um, and it was like Alberta wool. It was like milled and there, and I don't even know if it had a breed, but it, but it was something else. And I was like, oh, I was so excited to have it. I just, it was precious to me. So anyway, that was a big journey. I was looking for other things. So now fast forward to and maybe another five years later, right? So I'm already into wanting wools that are like more natural, more traceable. I know where they're coming from. I might know what the breed is, whatever. And then I get to, um, sorry, my dog is going ham. I don't think I have a, a delivery today. But if that's the postman, he's at my front door with some juicy raw wool and I'm gonna miss it because I'm up here filming the YouTubes. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so anyway, I'll let you know later how that went. So uh, fast forward about five years, I have this cousin that I'm quite close with, the whole, the whole my aunt and uncle and that whole side of the family. And he was engineering at UBC, just graduated. And then he was like, you know, I don't wanna do that. I want to be a farmer and he ended up getting like 14 Icelandic sheep it was like so like er, left turn like we're doing something else now and so he says to me he's like hey cuz you know I'm doing this triple breed this Icelandic thing it's like milk it's meat and it's wool do you want to figure out the wool right there's the there's a natural leap because I'm into knitting and I was like yeah I bet you I could figure out the wool and so I just set about figuring out the wool our first shearing was hilarious I bet that poor shearer, Joanna, if you ever see this, I'm so sorry, probably thought we <laughs> were 
<laughs> we were like two bricks short of a load. It was so bad because no one knew what we were doing. Like he'd never farmed before and I'd never like been around raw wool before. And so uh, anyway, the sheep all get sheared and then I bundle up a whole bunch of the wool and I found a local textile school. It's called Connie Agus Textiles. Sherry Stewart, I love her. So if anyone's ever heard me talk about Sherry, I call her my wool Yoda because she was the one, she's nearby, like maybe a 30 minute drive from me. I just, I think my sister found the school. We just show up at her property one day with these bags of fleece. We're like, tell us if this is good and show us what to do next. And so she was like, all right, here's how you skirt. We laid a fleece out. I remember her talking about things like bridge and neck and this, and I'm like, how is this woman distinguishing this? How is she looking at this blob on the table? And she knows what the parts are. Like I could not for the life of me then have even imagined uh, where I'm at now, where I can practically look at a fleece, you know, at 20 yards and be like, oh, that's a la la la. It was the la la la, you know, like I could. That's where the sommelier comes from. Grown on an eastern facing slope, etc. Uh, so it was a tangent. I'm sorry. So um, she walked us through a sh skirting process. And then like gave us like sort of like a visual like okay here's how you would scour theoretically and i think we paid her for maybe two hours worth of her time and we went on our way i didn't see her again for about a year and we're popping back up i'm like hey remember me and by that point i had gone like deep dive crazy we had like a drum carter by then i was scouring tons and tons of wool but i'd say the whole first year was just icelandic just from my cousin's flock um so when i was learning the fleece i was learning on or fleece that I would consider to be difficult now. Like I feel like for me, if I'm going to felt anything, I'm going to felt an Icelandic or a Gotland or a BFL or something like those kinds of wools. Like I can beat the crap out of these fine merinos. People worry about them all the time. Like, oh, it's a fine wool. I'm going to hurt it. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, don't, don't beat the crap out of it. But like, if you did, you're going to live. So anyway, bump back into Sherry and she has been like an amazing resource for just teaching. I have gleaned something from her every single time I've been in her presence and she still operates a wool school. I'm going to link it, her Facebook here in the, sh in the notes. Um, I say so confidently, like I know how to do all this, expert pants Millie. Um, in case anyone local is ever looking to learn spinning or anything else like that, she is such a good teacher. But anyway, so that's Wool Yoda. That's the whole deal there. But by the time I met back up with Wool Yoda, I had already started dipping my toes into burn pile fiber. So right after Icelandic came burn pile. I remember just going over Facebook Marketplace and these there'd just be people in my area who would be like, hey, you know, uh, four bags of wool on the side of the road. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And like other people would be looking out for it for me. Like my one of my brother-in-laws on Vancouver Island was like, hey, so I'm like painting this house today and the next door neighbors got like four bags of wool in his front yard. There's more people than you would think that have like four sheep in their backyard. I know that sounds so random, but it's true. There's way more than you would think. And they don't know what the breed is. I don't even know why they have them. I wonder if they know why they have them, but they have them. And you know, they don't necessarily do anything with the wool. So I remember just jumping in my truck. I would run out and go pick up wool from the side of the road. And then we, we learned on that. And that's where we really learned how to deal with problems. So we learned how to deal with heavy VM, matting, um, all kinds of things. Wow. I'm just, my mind is going through like a reel at the moment of all the terrors, the terrors that I have seen in wool. And it's all been from the burn pile, which has been wild. I love the burn pile because when you, when you win on a burn pile fleece, like you've never won in your life. Like that win feels like the most intense win ever. I don't need to go into it. I actually had this whole like love letter to the burn pile in one of my delightful lores. So I think it's like day seven, if anyone's curious, but um, anyway, back to it. So everything just kept growing. Um, we were starting to sell at the beginning of 2022, middle of 2022. I don't know. I remember putting some bats on my site, like no one wanted them. <laughs> they were, they, I was like hawking free shipping. I'm like, I'll give you a two for the price of one where prices were like way too low. We had all of this, all this stuff because we were learning and it was like free burn pile wool and whatever else. Um, Fast forward, fast forward, we did Fibers West last year, which was a huge 
jump for us to actually do like a fiber show. Um, we did Fibers West in the spring of last year and I brought all of these bats. I made more than I had ever made and we sold like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate how we sold. Like no one really knew who we were or what our deal was or anything like that. Um, Paula from Bad Anna's came and wholesaled after, which was awesome because I would have come home with way more bats otherwise. That at that time we weren't selling like we sell now, right? Anyway, it was right after Fibers West where one day I was like, remember Melly, how you once upon a time loved getting back to like just those pure wools, those sources, you were seeking them out. At that point, let me hold on. So at Fi up to Fibers West, we were working with hand processed and milled roving. We were working with both. After Fibers West, we went hand processed only. Another big move for us. Uh, we just decided like no more milled, no more. And I love mills, but I don't know. It was, I just, I love the hands-on process more. So we, we de-stashed all of our, all of our milled rovings and we started doing hand processed only. We started adding the lock to the bit, to the bat because we could now, because we're, this is the fleece. Like, look at this lock. This is the fleece you're working on. We washed it, you know? Whereas we couldn't get that, say, from the mill because, you know, it's milled. Um, anyway, that's what we did. And that's when everything took off. So I would say April of last year was the first month we ever, like, sold out within a day. And then May, we sold out within, like, four hours. And then, like, June, which was the biggest update we'd ever done ever, we were sold out in under an hour. Um... And July, we had stash dashers. We didn't do anything. August, September was a quick one. Um, October was when we did advents and those were gone in seven minutes. So, and this isn't like a flex. This is like, a, this is me just sharing. And I can't, I don't know, is it the switch? Is it that we switched to all hand processed? Is it that all of a sudden the name was out there because we had done Fibers West? Is it that, like, I don't know. I don't know. But um, there it was. Just, just chugging. <laughs> chug it along toot toot and nobody was more surprised than me and Aaron we were like what like I remember my sister calling me when um the advents were selling and she was just like I cannot believe these things are going so fast she was calling me at like, the four minute mark and like half of them are gone and I was even stunned like I think I was sitting in the bathroom doing my makeup and I was just like oh my gosh so so there's that's how I got into this I my cousin literally was like you want to figure out this wool because I decided overnight I'm going to be a farmer and I'm like okay and then boom I'm a fully fledged I work full-time in wool I'm in this room every day loving it etc so that's how that went we did do I must always say we did do 15 months of wool sales before we ever sold out and that was good it was good. It was a good curve to learn on. Some people are surprised to hear that, that we had so many sales. And there's some of you who were following me and buying from me even then, before, in the before time. Um, and that's really special. Erin, I remember one time, and I've shared this with a couple of people. I'll share it here broadly because it was so helpful to me. So for anyone who's starting up, keep something in mind. Not every customer is your customer. Not every customer is going to like what you have to offer or be able to afford your price or whatever it may be, right? And Aaron said to me in the beginning, he goes, okay, so how many customers do you have like now? And I was like, okay, like that would come back to you that are repeats. I'm like, maybe 20, 20 to 30, something like that. He was like, all right, grow that number to 100 and you'll be busier than you'll ever be able to keep up with. I was like, huh, okay. And that like immediately took all the pressure off right? Because not everyone's going to be my customer and not everyone's going to have heard of us and not everyone's going to see the value in hand processed wool or not everyone's going to, I don't know, like my face on Instagram all the time. And you know, they're going to, oh, this chick, that, you know, who knows, right? Who knows? All that, they, all that he said was, is just build that customer base to a hundred people that would come back to you and, and you'll never be able to keep up with more than that. And I was like, oh, I like that. And that just made me go, ah, okay. And that changed a lot of the way that we think and do business because when I do a shop update, 
the day and time I decide to do it is the day and time that works the best for me. I'm not looking at analytics. I'm not looking at what day the algorithms and let everyone see me. I'm not, I'm just going, okay, well, you know what, this day works best. This time works best, you know, and I'm not maybe trying to catch everybody. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so the origins are not as spicy as maybe you were hoping. Uh, I feel a little bit like I kept stumbling into the next step, not stumbling, but like boldly walking into the next step. Like every time we got another fleece and met another shepherd, and washed another thing, we learned how to card, we upgraded our equipment. That was a big one is we did, uh, we got big homie. Can't see it, but I just tapped it. We got big homie uh, right before we did Knit City last year. And Knit City last year was another really big one for us because that's like a pretty big show with an expensive booth fee. And I was like, ooh, like deservedly so. I'm not complaining about the booth fee, but it was serious. It was serious. Um, I wondered if this would be a good idea for me. I even had a wool friend tell me this probably wouldn't be a good idea for me. And I was like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. And so, we, <laughs> so we did, we did Knit City and it was awesome. It was the first time people came by the booth who knew us that felt kind of cool. You know what I mean? They were like, Hey, we follow you online. I was like, no way. Like it was pretty awesome. Fibers West was like that too, because the first year we did Fibers West, like no one knew who we were. So people kept walking into the booth and like looking at like price tags and be like, huh? Like, cause they didn't know us. They didn't know we were hand processed. They didn't know the time that goes into it or whatever. They were just wool with a price tag for a hundred grams and freaking out. Um, so there's the story. I like the story because it wasn't like one day I woke up and I was like, I am going to be a wool lady. You know, it was like, it just sort of happened. And I'm, and, and I think the byproduct of that is that I'm a little bit like, huh, okay. So what's going to happen next? Like what's possible? Mm -hmm. Like, I guess we're going to find out. And I, I just like that whole idea so much. Hence even going back to the origins, sommelier origins fiber club. Like that wasn't something I was thinking about six months ago and here it is. And you know, there's other things in the works. I'm not really a big fan of being like, watch this space because we're working on stuff, but like we're working on stuff and there's some cool things that are coming up and I feel overwhelmingly grateful to be here. And for anyone who watched Delightful Lore, you know I can't say too much about how grateful I am or I'm gonna start crying on the YouTube and we're not doing that today. But it's awesome. And uh, it's not lost on me at all that I get to do this every day. So it's pretty st stinking sick. So here you are, Somalia Origins, the origin story of Melly Knits. If anyone was keeping notes because they were hoping to get like business one, two, threes, like do not because Hence even Origins, the club this morning where I was like, I didn't even know I was going to do that this morning. I had no idea I was going to open up that club and release it this morning. And I was just like, eh, let's just, let's just put it out. I mean, you know, and most of Melly Knits has been like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen if we try that or push that button or do that thing or whatever. And we've had some, we've had some epic flops and we've had some wins. So I think I said everything I want to say say or there is to say about the origin story okay so other than that um I was going to show you guys something it's been a lot of just me sitting here talking and this is like the YouTube thing you do right my current spin mm, mm. look at me getting the hand going okay focus this was an experiment this is 50% yearling merino and 50% Gotland X lamb uh, on my Malacate spindle that I got from Colectiva Malacate, made, handmade in Mexico. I was so curious about how this was going to spin. It spins like a dream. Some of you got this at Fibers West, or did this go on the site? Some, some of you guys got this. I made a few of them. I love this blend. I love it. This was inspired by a yarn I had seen that was 50% Falkland Merino and 50% Gotland. So I get it. Falkland Merino is different than Merino X yearling, whatever this is, lamb. But the idea, you know, you get the vibe, you get the idea. And I was like, hey, I'm going to blend that and try it. I love it. I'm spinning that on my Malacate and then on my Spanish pea, I have got, uh, this is, oh, oh, it's my Gulf Coast native. It's my Gulf Coast native. This is Ixora and Bombix Silk. And she is absolutely gorgeous. So those are what I'm spinning on.
currently at the moment for the 100 Days of Long Draw. Uh, Andrea Mowry is hosting that. And then this big bad boy, I've got about six of these. So this is a special project um, that I plan on doing a sweater spin for. So this is, woo! Woo, that took a second. This is Ebony Haunui, 45%, 45% CVM X Rambouillet named Richie, and 10% this jet black alpaca. Holy, was my hair visible in that bat? I'm sorry. That's gross. Um, and then 45, 10% uh, alpaca from my favorite alpaca place, which is, I shouldn't say that so boldly, but I do. Uh, Sankea Farm Alpacas. They're in the Okanagan. I love their crimpy, beautiful alpaca. It's like the prettiest alpaca. <sighs> okay. So that's what I'm currently spinning. Currently knitting. Do we care? I don't watch YouTube videos. There, I said it. I don't watch knitting podcasts. But I was just like, so I don't really know how this is like supposed to go, but here's how it's going. This is what we're showing you, okay? I'm knitting Ginny by Andrea Mowry. This is a cardigan. You can read about it. It's a story with her grandma. It's very, very sweet. So I'm about here. Okay, I'm almost done. I added an extra inch to the body because I'm a tall girl. So I saw this. I appreciate that Mallory puts her size that she's wearing and how tall she is in her pattern post because she's 5'5", five five, I'm 5'10". Five so um, just dancing around, just under 5'10". Um, so I added an extra inch of length here and then I'm doing my three inches of ribbing and then I'm gonna do the big old shawl collar and then I'm gonna do a little sleeves and I'm loving this knit. It's gonna be done just in time for the hot summer weather because that's how it always goes for all of us. And I'm knitting it in yarn from a local farm uh, called Fiber and Forge. My friend Beatrice is the shepherd there. You guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see me out hanging out with her donkeys and her sheep and her chickens and things. So I get my favorite ram lambs wool is from her. It's what I knit my range shawl in. Also on my Instagram if you're curious. So these are, hold on. This is one sheep. This is a B. I'm going to not move. Whoa. This is a BFL. And this one is a blend of three of her sheeps, but it's like Shetland X kind of deal going on. So I'm just holding it double and knitting myself this beautiful sweater. And I like that the yarn is from a sheep that's like 30 minutes that away. Makes me happy. And that's what I'm knitting. Oh, wow. Look at me. I'm a real YouTuber. Showed you guys what I'm spinning and what I'm knitting. I told you about what I just did this morning, Origins of Melly Knits, and then what's coming up? Uh, we have finished washing for uh, this month's shop update. So I had this monster pile. We pulled all these fleece and everything scoured. Most of it's dry. We've done the Melly math on what is dry, which is the process where I weigh the finished clean weight and then I just, it's easy, right? I just take like the total I paid for the fleece and I divide that by how much we have now that it's clean. That gives me a new price per pound, which then I can break down to my price per hundred grams to use it in bats. And then that plus labor is what we charge for the bats when they go in the shop. So uh, that helps me determine all my pricing. Uh, we tier it a little bit. Like you'll kind of notice anyone who shop from us, we have peers that are either like 50 or 55. So I do that for simplicity's sake. Sometimes that fleece has better or worse margins, but I figure it all averages out eventually, um, seeing as we are a burn pile fam and whatever else. Anyway, uh, so that's coming up. I put this up next to me, by the way. This is the Masham lamb with the 12 to 15 inch staple. This fleece was, oh, never gonna be able to pull off hiding this. It's just too long. This fleece was such a booty cheek to wash. Unbelievable booty cheeks. Okay. Because I batch washed it. Cause I'm like, I batch wash everything. I'm going to batch wash it. And then it wouldn't come clean because all it would like gimp up like this. It would like curl up on itself and then it would like protect the ends of the tips and it would not come clean for me. And I was like, you little butt. So I ended up having to wash it in a way where everything was laid out and like drizzly so I could really get the dirt out of the tips. We won in the end, we didn't felt anything. I haven't carded any yet, but sitting here playing with it, where's my little brush? Sitting here playing with it, it has been kind of fun because I want to, I want to lock spin 
this sucker so bad. I don't actually have my little comb here. So I'm using this brush that we use to clean the carter. <clears throat> you can find it on Amazon. It's for cleaning combs or hair brushes in a hair salon. And it's my very favorite tool to clean the carter drums with. Okay, here we go. This is off script, by the way. Okay, I'm at the tip's end, and I'm just gonna draft this sucker out. Let's see, maybe I didn't comb it open enough. But this thing just drafts for like a mile. Like I can just, well, obviously it's like a 12 inch staple length, right, or 15 inch staple length. But this, we were drafting them last night, me and Aaron, and I was just like, holy moly, I want to lock spin this thing. So that's my next experiment today after I get all my work done. I wanna get uh, sommelier out, and I got a little bit more Melly Math to do, but that's what's coming up. Shop update at the end of the month that we're getting ready for. We're working towards and pulling the fleece today for Sommelier Firefly, which will be available May 10th at 7 a.m. And other than that, I think that's all I have to say. So, so thanks. If you're still here 36 minutes later for sticking around for Melly Knit's origin episode, talking about origins the first ever sommelier fiber club talking about origins of Melly Knits itself. I hope there was something interesting here for you. And I'm going to be back. I uh, don't totally know the format. I do like being in the wool room just because like, for instance, the doorbell was just going ham and so was the dog. And I don't know how much of that you guys heard, but had I been down in the spot where I filmed Delightful, we would have all been highly distracted by that. So this is better, but it would be fun. I think it would be fun to go through some things. For instance, I was skirting in my garage the other day and I just like put my stupid little neck thing on, the little cleavy booby holder thingy and just filmed myself skirting and talking about it. It was rambly and a lot of you found that really helpful. So like maybe we bring some of that here. Uh, I'm not an educator. I'm gonna put that out loud and clear. <laughs> I am not an educator. That's why I'll be like, okay, here's like eight accounts to go follow if you wanna learn about spindling, if you wanna learn about blah, 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 blah. But I am a good rambler. And if there's something to glean from my ramblings, you guys can just knock yourselves out. I will offer it up. So for now, I'm gonna turn this off and upload it. And I hope that everybody is doing well where you're at. And um, that's all I have to say. Okay, Nelly out. Okay, bye.